Don't you just love it? Love what? Tiffany's. Tiffany's came into existence in 1837 with a young man from Connecticut, Charles Lewis Tiffany, whose family was in the dry goods and cotton business in Connecticut. And the first day's receipts in September of that year, when they opened at the end of September, were a wonderful $4.95. Their first store was down at 259 Broadway. They have moved six times. Um, as society moved uptown, Tiffany moved uptown, and they relocated uh, at the corner of Fifth Avenue and 57th Street in 1940. Isn't it wonderful? Do you see what I mean, how nothing bad could have happened to you in a place like this? It isn't that I give a hoot about jewelry except diamonds, of course like that. Charles Lewis Tiffany knew that the, the diamonds were very much a symbol of his, his company, and so when this great canary yellow diamond was discovered in South Africa in 18, 1877, um, he bought it and it was sent to Paris to be cut. And then it was cut to 128.54 carats um, with 90 facets to maximize its brilliance. It's a canary-colored diamond, and at the time, it was the largest canary diamond in existence. It measures one inch by one inch, and it has wonderful brilliance. There are only two people who have ever worn the Tiffany diamond, and of course, Audrey Hepburn was one of those two people at the time of the filming of Breakfast at Tiffany, and there are very charming photographs of her looking very happy to be wearing, you know, the most famous, famous American diamond. No, I'm going to buy you a present. You bought me one, a typewriter ribbon, and it brought me luck. All right, but Tiffany's going to be pretty expensive. I've got my check and $10. Oh, I wouldn't let you cash a check. But a present for $10 or under, that I'll accept. Of course, I don't exactly know what we're going to find at Tiffany's for $10. The Tiffany setting has become the traditional setting for engagement rings. Because it does maximize the brilliance of the stone, you can see into the stone from underneath. It holds the stone away from the setting. And it makes it, it to, to me, it makes it more beautiful. Now it's the standard setting for a diamond, the six-prong setting. But that was de devised by Mr. Tiffany and his gemologist in 1887 and presented to the world before that diamonds were set in what were called crown settings which set them rather low and very little light got into them. When you get a little blue box tied with a white satin ribbon and it's what people when they see that blue box they understand that. It has become famous because Tiffany's has maintained the quality of the items that are inside so that blue box symbolizes what Tiffany was and still is. The facets, so to speak, of Tiffany's talents and adventures in the world are very many. And of course, Tiffany has been very associated with the presidents of the United States and the government in Washington. Abraham Lincoln was one of our clients. President Grant was one of our clients and right up to John F. Kennedy. In uh, the late 19th century, the U.S. government um, realized that they wanted to update the Great Seal of the United States. And James Whitehouse, who was an engraver for Tiffany's, um, redesigned the Great Seal of the United States. Do you think Tiffany's would really engrave it for us? I mean, you don't think they would feel it was beneath them or anything like that? Well, it is rather unusual, madam. But I think you'll find that Tiffany's is very understanding. If you would tell me what initials you would like, I think we could have something ready for you in the morning. Didn't I tell you this was a lovely place? Everyone thinks of Tiffany as an American institution and very much their Tiffany and Company, that it's not my Tiffany, it's not our Tiffany and Company, no. It's the American people's institution, it's their Tiffany and Company. And because it has had it, its hand in so many of the events and, uh, of the United States and, and still does today. 
Since Tiffany was one of the largest silver makers in this country, a lot of the sports enthusiasts, those who sponsored races, etc., came to Tiffany's, such as in the 1850s, early 1860s. Today we, we make the Super Bowl trophy, the Vince Lombardi Super Bowl trophy since 1967, and, and the NBA trophy, and, and uh, NASCAR, and of course the World Series, let's not forget that, the World Series trophy. Tiffany's has continued their high level of quality and in everything that they design from a small little pair of earrings to an important diamond necklace, um, they're interested in quality so that anyone who comes into their store and buys something feels that they are getting this quality. Someone said one day, you know, what's Tiffany about when our wonderful publicist, the great fashion impresario Eleanor Lambert, was standing next to me? And she said, it's fun to dream, that's what it's about. It's fun to dream, it's romantic to dream, that's what Tiffany is about.